Underground Bunker. This is your proprietor. You want news? I got news. We got a jury. Seven women, five men took the oath of office today at uh, about 3.30 in the afternoon, as well as eight alternates, four women, four men. Uh, voir dire today was a long, busy process. Uh, sure seemed to me like both sides, Philip Cohen and uh, uh, for the prosecution, both Ariel Anson and Reinhold Mueller, were not just asking questions of these prospective jurors, but also starting to present some ideas about the case and about the big questions they're going to have to face. So you can see that in my notes. Uh, of course, Philip Cohen hammering the idea of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, presumption of innocence. Uh, that Danny Madison right now as he stands is not guilty until enough evidence is presented to say that he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And then the prosecution on their side, you could tell they were trying to bring in some basic concepts of this case that, for example, although these are forcible rapes, there's no DNA evidence. <clears throat> and the idea that one person's testimony, if you believe it, is enough to establish a fact. Because, you know, it's tough with rape cases. You know, there's not necessarily a, a witness, a third person. So they, they got into those concepts. And um, in, that, in that process, uh, both sides agreed there were a number of people that should not be on a jury either uh, for various reasons. And so by the end of the, by, by 3 o'clock or so, uh, probably whittled down to about 90 people. Now, I know some of you are concerned about one of the people I described said that he works for a publisher of Scientology books or that a client of his or whatever definitely noted him. But it, if you're wondering why I didn't make a bigger deal about him, his juror number was 152. Now, this is my second time through this, and I knew that the jurors, they, they might bring in a couple of hundred people, but it's really only the first hundred that have any chance of getting on the jury. I knew that the, a juror 152 would just not have much of a chance at all, and sure enough, he was not he was not selected at the end. But how it works is, after they've whittled away people for various reasons, they seat the first 12 by number, and then each side gets a chance to remove people one at a time. And right off the bat, the people were fine. They said, "We'll take this jury." They 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 didn't want to replace anybody. But the defense kept taking people off. And once the defense took people off, then the people started taking, the government started taking people off as well. We had a number of changes from each side. But fairly quickly, they had a panel of 12 that they could accept. Those 12 people stood up. They took the oath of office. I quickly noted that there were seven men, seven women, seven women and five men. Uh, as far as ethnicities, uh, they were not standing long enough for me to jot that all down. That'll something I'll work on later on, but it definitely looked like a Los Angeles mix of different ethnicities um, and ages. So I'll try to get that down later. But right now, we've got seven women, five men on this jury, and they are set. Then the same thing with the alternates. They seated the next eight people, and then each side removed people. And uh, I have to, you know, at the time, all I can do is write down what number is replacing what number. I can't, I don't have at my fingertips the details of who each of these people are. But, see, that's why I'm glad I took all those notes uh, over the last couple of days about every single individual juror. So we should have some idea, uh, something, some little thing about all 20 of these people. I'm going to go back tonight, look through those. Uh, I'm sure you'll look through it as well. And we'll see if we can't start to learn a little bit about who's on this jury. There's nothing wrong with that. We're just getting some basic info. We don't know their identities, who they are. We just want some basic information about, you know, what their professions are and that kind of thing. So we'll try to figure that out. But again, please, this juror 152, that number's way too high. He's never going to get on a jury. And sure enough, he didn't get on this jury. Um, and... Uh, you know, there were definitely some folks that, that admitted they could not be fair in this kind of a case, either because it was a sexual assault case or uh, because of the time that's passed. 
There were some really interesting questions raised about that. Not much, people, not much about Scientology in this final round. There really wasn't much said about that. Or uh, there was a little bit more said in that in, on Monday or uh, uh, Wednesday, yesterday. Gosh, I'm losing track. Yesterday, there was definitely more said about Scientology than today. Um, so, you know, uh, we've got our jury. That means we get tomorrow off, Friday, and we get opening statements on Monday, just like Judge Olmedo planned it. Very, she's very efficient. She's very efficient, and it's worked very smoothly. So, uh, you know, has uh, have the uh, problems with the that happened in the first trial been addressed? I don't know. You know, it's... Um, You know, these you, you could tell from the things that the, the defense attorneys and the prosecution attorneys were asking, they were definitely referring to some of the issues that came up in that first trial. But, uh, you know, these women have powerful stories to tell. And uh, let's hope these jurors are paying attention to that and also to the Scientology component. And that's why they, you know, a couple of the jurors were asking, why is this taking so long? Why are we listening to 20 year old allegations? Well, they're going to learn about the Church of Scientology and how terrified these women were about coming forward. So let's hope we've selected 20 people who are going to pay attention. Now, about the alternates, I got a lot of questions about this last time, particularly from our readers from overseas. All 20 jurors, the 12 regular jurors and the 8 alternates, will be sitting in the jury box through the whole trial. The alternates are not sitting somewhere else and being brought in later. No, all 20 people will hear all of the evidence. When a juror needs to leave for whatever reason, the alternate that takes their place has been listening to all the same evidence as everyone else. So that's not a problem. The only time it becomes more of an issue is during deliberations. If a juror comes out and they have to replace with an alternate, those alternates are not in the jury room during deliberation. So that, even though the alternates are familiar with all the evidence, you have to start the deliberations from the beginning if you replace a juror during deliberations. But that's weeks from now. The important point is, so you understand, the alternates are in the courtroom with us, like with the regular jurors, and they hear all the same evidence. And uh, let's just hope they're all paying good attention starting on Monday. I think they will be. I think they're interested in this case. And uh, I guess that's the latest. I got out a little early today. I think I'm going to go for a bike ride. All right. From Clara Shortridge Fultz Criminal Justice Center, this is your proprietor signing out.